Tonight on Catalyst, Mary Ann asks... Does screening for prostate cancer save lives? And Dr Norman Swan works out what's wrong with tests. How medical tests can put you on the medical treadmill. G'day, welcome to Catalyst. Prostate cancer is one of the leading causes of cancer death amongst men. Now, the public health message for all forms of cancer has always been early detection and treatment is the best thing. But is this the case for prostate cancer? Some doctors think that it isn't. Mary Ann DeMacy investigates whether prostate cancer screening really is a good idea. My erectile function is getting back to about half where it should be. Not quite, not quite ready to use. Ross Gurney oh. is still suffering the side effects of prostate cancer surgery. Thank you. Is that delivery coming yet? My father had prostate cancer, so right. Right. since I turned 40, I've been getting uh, blood tests annually. I went to my GP with uh, blood results and my PSA had, ra had risen uh, substantially, so that was um, when she sent me to a specialist. And uh, that's where it all started. A biopsy revealed Ross had an aggressive tumour on his prostate gland. My initial response was, I've got cancer, I've got to get it out of there. Nothing else sort of mattered as much as that. The prostate gland is about the size of a walnut and sits under the bladder. It surrounds the urethra and on either side lie the bundle of nerves which control erections. Testing for prostate cancer involves a simple blood test to measure prostate-specific antigen, or commonly known as the PSA. A PSA basically raises a red flag to alert the clinician and, to the, and the patient that this man may have a risk of prostate cancer. It's usually followed up with a physical examination. A digital rectal exam may pick up lumps on the gland despite a normal PSA test. If either test is abnormal, a biopsy may be necessary. The definitive test is the biopsy because that is the only way of confirming the presence of cancer and to determine whether the cancer is an aggressive tumour or a non-aggressive tumour. What is your knowledge of prostate cancer? For years, public health messages encouraging early cancer detection have been loud and clear. We've all been told that the best defence against cancer is to get tested and to pick it up early. But when it comes to prostate cancer screening, it's controversial. There are a lot of cancers out there in older men and in men with other medical conditions that we don't really need to diagnose. Up until now, we really have been um, in the dark about the benefit of prostate cancer screening. Finally, we've got the answers. A large European study published just this year showed that screening increased prostate cancer detection by 70%. The more you test people, the more you're going to find. And finding all that prostate cancer is not necessarily going to be a good thing. So why isn't finding all that prostate cancer a good thing? Well, it's a difficult concept to grasp. We're conditioned to believe that all cancer should be detected early because it can be life-threatening. But prostate cancer is different. Not all prostate cancers are created equal. And there are men who get prostate cancers you would never know that you had. It's almost an inevitable part of ageing. It just kind of sits there, doesn't go anywhere, doesn't cause you any symptoms, and certainly doesn't kill you. We know that prostate cancer is very common. About 60% of men over the age of 60 have prostate cancer, but very few die from it. In fact, your lifetime risk of dying from prostate cancer is only 2 to 3%. That means you have a 97% chance of dying from something else. This is where the controversy lies. Some men are being treated for prostate cancers that might never cause them problems. I think there has been prostate cancer over treatment in the past. And just because you're diagnosed with prostate cancer doesn't mean you have to have an aggressive treatment. But what's the harm in treating all prostate cancers? Well, 
it's the side effects. There is uh, the possibility of incontinence, and there can be an effect on the uh, man's uh, erectile function. Found out cancer again. Right. Being impotent is a real assault on men's masculinity. And when erectile dysfunction occurs, men lose their confidence, they lose their self-esteem, their satisfaction, not only with their sex lives is reduced, but with their life in general. Sometimes incontinence is a worse outcome for men than the erectile dysfunction. They don't care that they can't have sex anymore, but the fact that they're leaking urine and have to wear pads can be very soul-destroying for them. The side effects may also impact a man's partner. Carol, what was your reaction when Ross told you about the side effects? I, I must admit I was a bit worried, but I was more worried about the cancer than the side effects. I just wanted that gone and, yeah. Did you ever consider not having the operation? Not for me. Not for me not, either. Not for I... one second, no. I just wanted that cancer out of there. The European trial also showed that screening a population of men for prostate cancer reduced their risk of dying by 20%. Professor Alex Barrett took a closer look at what this statistic meant. Well, a 20% reduction in risk sounds like a really impressive reduction in risk, but what's really important is to look at it in absolute terms, so the actual numbers of deaths prevented. So this is a representation of the data from the European study. Mm -hmm. This was 1,000 men aged between 55 and 69 who don't have PSA screening. And what we're looking at is how many of them die from prostate cancer over the next 10 years. So you can see there's four deaths. Right, and when you compare that to men who have been screened, mm -hmm. what do we get? So if these men do have the PSA screening test and you can see that there will be three deaths from prostate cancer over 10 years. So by screening, you're saving one extra life. That's right, exactly. You're preventing one man from dying from prostate cancer over the next 10 years. If you consider an entire population, that translates into thousands of lives saved. But on the flip side, it comes at a cost. For every life saved, 48 more men received invasive cancer treatments with potentially adverse side effects. That's why some experts question the value of screening for prostate cancer. All cancer screening programs have their pros and cons. Cancer screening is a two-edged sword. And what this most recent trial shows us about prostate cancer is that there is a lot of harm relative to benefit. Another criticism of screening men for prostate cancer is that the PSA test has problems. It misses prostate cancers. Um, about 15% of cancers will be missed by it. It has the opposite problem in that it gives you false positives. So men will get um, false alarms from it. And its worst problem is that it picks up cancers that don't matter, that don't have biological significance. PSA testing is not a perfect test. And there aren't any perfect tests in medicine. Men get a level of reassurance from having a normal PSA test, or they get a level of reassurance from having a negative biopsy. So that, that's frequently overlooked, the value of the reassurance. It's estimated that 50% of screened prostate cancers are never destined to cause you symptoms, let alone kill you. So there's an awful lot of men receiving radical treatments unnecessarily. So how do we work out which cancers need treating and which ones don't? So we can make some estimates, and, and there's things called Gleason scores that help you decide how aggressive the cancer is, but they're a long way from perfect. So that's the dilemma. No test can tell you with certainty whether your prostate cancer will kill you or never cause you a problem. In the end, treatment is your choice. There was no choice really in my mind because it was a, an aggressive tumour. Um, if the tumour had gone to the lymph glands, the cancer's you know, in my system and could appear anywhere. So it was a matter of dealing with the after effects, just get the tumour out and uh, get on with it. Recently, the Urological Society of Australia and New Zealand reviewed its guidelines on who should have the test. Our position now is that men who want to be proactive about their prostate health should consider having a test at the age of 40. With regards to men over the age of 70, 
you need to look at the individual. If a man has a life expectancy in excess of seven to 10 years, then there is likely to be um, some benefit in um, detecting a prostate cancer at an earlier stage. The difficulty is that the treatments for prostate cancer have side effects. So what you really want is to be able to have those treatments only for the cancers that really matter. So what we really need is a much better test. One that picks up the cancers that matter without dredging up all these cancers that don't. Until we develop a better prostate cancer test, it's really a difficult choice.